Welcome to Choice Classic Radio, where we bring to you the greatest old-time radio shows. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and thank you for donating at choiceclassicradio.com. No, never mind, Mary. Trouble, I'll tell you to go away. I said we were going to the theater tonight, and I meant... Uh-huh. I'll believe we're going after we get there. <laughs> That's my girl who said that. Package for Boston Blackie. Valuable package. Funny valuable. You Boston Blackie? Uh-huh. Okay. Sign here, and you get the package. All right. What's the news thing that makes it so valuable? Who's it from? I can't say who it's from, and I don't know what's in it. Only I got orders to tell you something, too. Uh, don't lose this package and what's in it, and get it to the police as fast as you can. Here's an envelope with a thousand dollars in it for your trouble. Go on. Hey, oh, wait a minute. Hey, Blackie. No good things come in small packages, but trouble comes in small packages, too. <laughs> this is some kind of a gag, Mary. A valuable gag, according to Messenger. And what's in the package? Yeah, I don't know. But this could be a frame up. I'm not taking it to the police until I see what it is. Well, if it's valuable, maybe the sender wants to take it to the police for safekeeping. That's the thought. I wonder what's so valuable about it. Well, maybe it's a box of money. A million dollars. Or jewelry. No. Yeah, it's too light for that. It's only wrapped carefully enough. Must be priceless. Well, open the box, will you? Okay, here it goes. What the? Blackie, am I seeing things? Somebody gave you a thousand dollars to take this to the police? Yes. And all it is is a shoe. A worn and battered old shoe. <laughs> And now, back to Dick Palmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Uh, look, Blackie, it's bad enough when you clutter up my office with a bunch of worthless things, <laughs> including yourself, but you're going to bring me an old shoe. Now, wait a minute. I bought this shoe with some kind of a gag, too, but I was paid a thousand dollars to deliver it to you. So someone has a good reason for wanting you to have it. Yeah, I'll let him send a mate to it, and I'll wear it. What do I want with an old shoe? I... Wait a minute, I just thought of something. What? Listen. Yes, Inspector. Matthews, there was a case about nine or ten years ago that's still unsolved. Yeah. A case involving a shoe print. We never found a shoe that made it. I think I remember something about it, Inspector. Well, check the files, will you? Tell me what case it was. Yes, sir. Right away. Well, Blackie, what do you think of that? I think it's wonderful, Faraday. If this is the shoe that figured in that case. Some shoe made that print. We never found a shoe. Mm. Why would anyone want a shoe brought to the police unless it was some kind of evidence in some case? Well, there might be other reasons. What other reasons? Well, I don't know. It seems just a little too simple if this shoe is evidence in a murder case. Oh, you always want to make things complicated, don't you? Well, this is one time. Yeah? Inspector, this is Matthew. Yeah? Uh, about that case. What Spectre, case was it? Could you find it? Yes. The only unsolved case we have involved in a shoe prints the Richards case. That was ten years ago. Thanks, Matthews. That's all I want to know for now. I remember the rest of the case? Yes. Well, your memory's really sharp, Dave, isn't it, eh? Yes, I know all about this now. The person who sent the shoe to you knows that it's evidence and doesn't want to be mixed up in it, which is also the reason it was delivered to you and not directly to me. We still have the plaster impression of that shoe. Well, take the shoe and see if it matches the print. Oh, by the way, who is the chief suspect in the Richards murder? Don't tell me what to do! That, that, that. The chief suspect was Eddie Maley. He was a punk at that time, but he's an east side big shot now. Eddie Maley, huh? That's well, while you have a little conference with your footprint experts, I think I'll go down and have a little talk with Eddie Maley. Mr. Maley, I heard over at the joint that Mickey Elvis is looking for you on account of that diamond robbery we pulled. Looking for me, is he, huh? Yeah. Well, he knows where to find me. Why does he drop in? <laughs> Because he knows we'll drop him, I guess. I'm going to take it. Stop, stop hey. Mr. Maley. Something smashed away. Take on where they are, boys. Mr. Maley, it's Boston Black. Oh, I see. What's the idea coming through the window, Blackie? Well, I wanted to get in to see you and some guy at the door. I had a different idea. Oh, I didn't catch you when you were busy, Maley. I'm never too busy to see an old enemy, Blackie. Time I'll talk to you later. Sure. Yeah, Blackie. No, thanks. I prefer to stand. That's up to you. I do for you. Just remember a few things about the Richards murder case, Mary. The Richards murder? For ten years, the plaster impression of the footprint has been leading police headquarters for the shoe that would fit it. Well, we 
we think that shoe turned up this evening. It might be your shoe. Don't look at me, Prince Charming. I'm not the Cinderella you want. Merely, you were never brought to trial in the Richards case, but you were Richards' only enemy. You don't know what you're If that about. shoe fits that plaster impression, and if Faraday can prove that shoe belonged to you, you'll go to trial in the chair. Thanks for warning, Frank. So long, Merely. I'll be seeing you. You'll be sorry to hear. Uh, the wind is open. Why don't you go out the way you came in? You're going out of this world the way you came in. You're going to be carried out. Come so on. Yeah, Mr. Mellie. Hi, I'm Blackie. Just left my office. You want us to muss him up as he gets to the front door, huh? No, let him go. But send Dan down to the airline's office right away and get me a ticket to Mexico on the first flight out. <laughs> Lovely evening. Not going to the theater. <laughs> Mary, I'm sorry, honestly. I promise you we'll see that play tomorrow night, for sure. I'm sure we will. Unless tomorrow night you get another priceless shoe. In case the priceless shoe is just about over, Mary. Huh? If Faraday was able to trace its owner, and if it, it fits a certain plaster impression, I'm going to run in and see him for a minute to get good news. Well, I'll wait in the car if you don't mind. Okay. Look, uh, the time to go to a newsreel theater, if that's any consolation. Oh, well, it's better than nothing. I'll be right back. I'll use Faraday's private entrance so I won't get tangled up with the boys at that. Don't whistle at any characters while I'm gone. Any objections if I just whistle back? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Faraday. Well, thanks. Well, what do you know? You didn't say get out of here. Well, and I know why, too. You want a second? How can you solve the Richards case? Yeah. It took ten years, Faraday. You have solved the Richards case, all right. Well, that old shoe fit the plaster impression, didn't it? No. That's what I... No. That's right, no. And all, no. But Faraday... Frankie, that shoe not only didn't fit the impression of the print in the Richards case, but it's a style of shoe that wasn't made till four years ago. And the print in the Richards case is ten years old. Uh-oh. What's the matter, Blackie? You're not laughing. That old shoe gave our theory a good swift kick. Miss Faraday, you have a right to be wrong, but I know you are. Well, we'll have to forget about the Richards case and maybe something else. Somebody sent me that shoe for a reason for that. Brilliant. Positively brilliant lots of that. I know. That messenger had strict orders to deliver that shoe directly to me, but he was told that he was carrying something valuable. And I believe it, too. Yeah, take your old shoe and get out of here, will you? All right, Faraday. But I'll be back with it. But never mind. And if I can find the messenger who brought it to me, I'll be back with proof that it's valuable, too. <laughs> Paper? Paper? Who will buy a paper from the North? Oh, Miss Brown. Uh, you never fail to get a paper from me, do you? I miss you. How's everything? Uh, the same as it's been at my newsstand every night since you bought my first paper. Uh, here you are. Thank you. How's Mr. Brown? Fine, thank you. See you tomorrow evening. Uh, good night. Good night, Miss Johnson. Paper? Paper? Latest paper? Wait, 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 I well, might as well cross here as anywhere else. Sir. Paper, will you buy a paper, please, gentlemen? Oh, why don't you get lost? What oh. a disposition you've got. Buy, buy a paper from the guy. Get lost, will yeah, you? Grandpa, this won't buy a yacht. I'll buy a paper from you. Keep the change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Paper, who will buy a paper? Hey, come on, Bill. Life's changed. That's all. Oh, come on, will you? Hey. Holy mackerel, what a disposition you've got. You inherit that from your old man? Huh. I inherited nothing from him. I love this. He with an old man worth a half a million bucks, and I haven't got a dime. You'll get the money soon. Your lawyer, I can promise that. So what do you care? I care because I want to know. I want to feel it in my pocket. I want to spend it. I want to be rich. I know. I was born to be rich, Bill. And until I am, I'm going to be miserable. I wonder if you won't still be miserable after you get your old man's money. <laughs> Well, I'd like to see him. Yeah. Well, just a minute, I'll get him. Well, I'm lucky. I hope he's the one. We've been to almost every messenger service in town. We just saw uh, luck the guy who delivered that shoe wasn't from a messenger service at all. Yeah. Oh, Lucky, this boy fits the description you gave me. Is he the one? Yes, he is. I had last. Oh, hi, Blackie. Hello there. What's your name, son? Harry Young. Well, Harry. Yeah? Uh, did you know what was in the package that you delivered to me earlier this evening? No, I didn't. What was this? Huh? Who told you to bring it? Well, I, I, I can't tell you that, Blackie. I promised I wouldn't. Well, give me the address of the place where you picked up the package. This 
you may be involved in a murder, Harry. Well, in that case, I went to 2100 21st Street. First Street. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Come on, Mary. Okay. okay. We're going to 2100 21st Street so we can learn something new about an old shoe. <laughs> Love the way we went to the newsreel theater, Blackie. Oh, Mary, I know when the dog go four in the morning. Uh-huh. Well, there's 2110, 21st Street. Uh-huh, there's 2108. 2106. 2104, going, going down. 2102. Next is 2100. Yeah, there it is. The real estate sign says, yes, yeah, it's a 2100 is an empty lot. So I see. And it's one time in a lot. Tells us nothing. <laughs> Now, back to Boston Blackie. Blackie receives a package, the contents of which are supposed to be valuable. But all the package contains is an old shoe. Blackie surmises that the shoe is the one which made a footprint in a ten-year-old still unsolved murder case. But it isn't. Blackie then finds out at what address the shoe was picked up for delivery. The address is an empty lot. As we return to our story, it is the next day. An old man is selling papers at his street corner newsstand. Papers, papers, who buy papers hey, from hey, an old... Mister! Oh, hello there, son. How's the messenger business today? Okay, Grandpa. Hey, but look, I gotta talk to you. Why, did something go wrong? No, everything went off okay. You delivered that package to Boston Blackie and you told him to take it to the police? Yeah, sure, I took your dough to do it, so I did it. Hey, but look, Grandpa. Well, what cooks? Well, what do you mean? Well, you said that package was valuable, but all it was in it was a crummy-looking old shoe. Then I told you not to look at what was in that package. I didn't, but Blackie came and told me what was in it. And then you told him you delivered it for me. No, Son, no, I didn't do that. I didn't open it yet, Grant. I even told Blackie that I picked up the package from you at an empty lot. Oh, thank you, son, thank you. You'll be rewarded for what you've done. Look, that dough you gave me was funny for the job. But I, I sure wish I knew what was such hot stuff about that old shoe. My boy? Yeah? Someone in this town is worth $500,000. Play leaving at gate 11 for Washington, Dallas, and Mexico City. Play leaving at gate 11 for Washington, Dallas, and Mexico City. You don't mind? Well, maybe I do. Or well, maybe you better not. Going somewhere, maybe? How do you know my name? I make it my business to know the names of guys like you. And the faces, too. My car. My badge, yeah. Williams is the name, really. Deputy Inspector Williams. Now that we're old friends, maybe you'd like to come along with me. Some other time, Williams. I have other plans right now. Plans for a trip on a plane, huh, Mary? I don't think you'll like it in Mexico. The chili con carne might not agree with you. Besides, I don't think Inspector Faraday would like you leaving town. Look, I'm not doing anything wrong. No, but there's a chance you did do something wrong, and very recently. Come on, Maley. Inspector Faraday wants to talk to you. You haven't any right to take me in. I know. Isn't that all? Come on, Maley. Let's get moving. Hey, wait a minute. My plane's leaving. Isn't that a coincidence? Your plane's leaving. And so are you. Only you're heading in different directions. <laughs> Call aside, Faraday speaking. Inspector Faraday, this is Deputy Inspector Williams at the airport. Yes, William. Guess who was down here getting ready to board the plane for Mexico? Oh, a Mexican? Yeah, uh, a guy we don't like here, and they won't like in Mexico, Eddie Maley. Maley, huh? Yeah, I spotted him just a minute ago. I'm glad he talked to him yesterday about the Richard Murder case. Yeah, I know, but I found a lot of stolen diamonds on him. Stuff taken in that big hold up last week. Wow. Don't go away, Inspector, I'm bringing him in. <laughs> Come out the door. All right, you answer it, will you, Bill? How lazy can a guy get? All right, I'll answer. Yeah. Hi, Mac. I'm a reporter from the Star Journal. I'd like to talk to Roger Hollister. Okay, come in. Roger, it's a reporter to talk to you. You talk to me, Bill. You're my lawyer. Well, I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Hollister. What about? About the money you're coming into next week. I understand it's quite a lot, and that you're getting married, too. Beat it, will you? I hate your corner. Oh, Roger, minute. what's the matter with you? It won't do you any harm to talk. Look, well, you talk to him if you want to, Bill. You want to read a book. So what's the matter with that? Guy? Nothing. He's just his usual disagreeable self. Well, maybe you'll tell me what I want to know. Maybe. Young Halsey gets his dad's stone next week, right? Yeah, we can do that. 
I understand nobody knows what the old Hollis is. Dead or alive. No, no one knows for sure. He just left home for his office one morning. He's never heard from or seen again. Mm -hmm. Neither he nor his body have ever turned up anywhere. But it'll be seven years to the day next Wednesday. Huh? That's right. And at the end of seven years, old Hollis is legally dead, and young Hollis goes from rags to rich and from bachelorhood to married life. <laughs> Some break to the day in his marriage. Young Hollis inherits. Huh? Why the hook there it is, too. Yeah. Roger is the only living heir. His mother was killed in an auto accident two years ago. Neither she nor the son could touch a cent of the old guy's money all the years he's been missing. Not a dime of it. But next week, Roger gets it all. Well, some guys get all the breaks. Yeah, I know. But why is it, friend, that it's generally the wrong guy? Roger, will you stop it? You know, you've been sitting there staring at that shoe for a half hour. I know it. Mary, look at it. Sitting there on the table. Now, what... Now, how can you be interested in an old shoe when it's so much in the newspaper? Well, what's my newspaper with news? Well, Roger and Hollis is getting married. So what? Shoe. Old shoe. Who's Roger Hollis? The sole survivor of the famous Hollis family. Shoe. Hollis family certainly had tough luck. Roger's mother was killed in an accident two years ago, and his father disappeared nearly seven years ago. Hmm. Roger comes into a half million dollars a week from today, when his father will be declared legally dead. Mary, why would an old shoe be bad? I don't know. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if old man Hollister were alive? I bet anything his son wouldn't be really married next mm. week, would he? He's marrying Sally Lawrence, and she marries for money at least once a year. Mary. Yeah. Mary, the shoe. It's true, I think I've got it. I say you've got it, but you can have it. Mary, it's impossible. It just can't be true. I don't tell you, Dr. Young. No, it can't be true, but it is. All I can say is, if it is, I know why that shoe was sent to me, what it means, and how that one shoe is going to walk right down the aisle and break up a wedding. Yes? Are you Roger Holliston? So what if I am? So you're just a guy I want to see. Ain't nobody invited you in. I took the invitation for granted. I'm Boston Blackie. Boston Blackie, huh? What do you want with me? Not much. From what I hear of you, you're not worth much. But you will be a week from today. Does this shoe look familiar to you? No. Should it? No, not especially. But would you say it was the size shoe your father wore? How should I know? I haven't seen my old man for almost seven years. And you've really missed it. Look, what did you come up here for? To insult me? No, but now that you mention it, certainly isn't a bad idea. That is, if it's possible to insult someone like you. I'll tell you what is possible. You're going to be thrown out of here on your ear. But you're not particular about which one I land on. This here. Right here, wrong here. Right here, wrong here. Now, but if I were you, I wouldn't mention the fact that I was here. If you do, I might be back. Well, Faraday, whose fingerprints were on the old shoe? You only brought it back an hour ago. What do you think? We have nothing else to do but check it for you? No, but I think you did. We did. Your fingerprints were on it. And yours. Uh-huh. And the lab technician. Uh-huh. And another print, too. Now, how fresh is that other print? Very. Made in the last day or two, I'd say. And made very definitely, too. Do you know whose print that is? Yes. We have a duplicate in our non-criminal file. Naturally. But I hate to tell you whose it was. You won't believe me. I'll tell you whose it was. Go ahead, whose. It was Martin Hollis's. What? A man missed it so long. Just give me an envelope and a piece of paper, lend me a policeman, and I'll find him for you, too. <laughs> and asked for me. Then he gave me this envelope and told me to deliver it to whoever sent that old shoe to Boston Black. Oh, I see. Maybe you better open it, huh? And maybe you want me to take a message back. The guy said he'd wait in the office. Yes, yes, I'll open it. Oh, look, Grandpa, what cooks? I don't know. I couldn't sleep last night thinking about that old shoe. Are you nuts or something? No, but there are some people who might think so, son. What, look, there's no message in this envelope. What? It's a piece of blank paper. Oh. Maybe I should have written your greeting, Grandpa. Who's that? Blackie! Thanks for making it easy for me to follow you, Harry. And if you want to know who gave you that envelope, the policeman, I borrowed from Harry. 
Blackie, I didn't want anyone to find me, but you know who I am, don't you? Yes, I do. You're Martin Hollister. What? Yes, I am. I'm glad to know you're alive, which is a sentiment that I don't think will be shared by your son. <laughs> How does it feel to be back from the dead? <laughs> Never having been dead, Miss Leslie, I, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> but as Blackie probably told you, my whole scheme was to make it known that I was still alive, but not to give up my disguise as the old me standing around the corner. Well, I had to break through your disguise to prove my theory to Faraday, Miss Hollister. I may have brought you out of hiding, but I didn't upset your primary purpose in sending me that shoe. Oh, what was that, Blackie? To prove he was alive so his son Roger couldn't get his money? Exactly. Hollister was going to continue to let the world think him dead if his son Roger changed his ways. Yeah, but he didn't change, Miss Leslie. I opened my newsstand on a corner that he passed every day just so I could watch him. But he continued to be the same Roger Hollister I ran away from. And my wife was just like him. I see where your son's marriage to gold digging Sally Lawrence has been called off. Yes, I read that. No money, no love. Well, I assure you, my son isn't upset about it. I don't imagine he is. No. I like the way you tied up your fortune so that it couldn't be inherited until you were declared legally dead. My family deserves to live in comparative poverty, like it. As you guessed, I hoped it would change them, but when it didn't, I decided never to let them see me again. No, let your remaining heir get your money. Well, you certainly accomplished your purpose. But I can't understand why your son never recognized you if he passed a newsstand every day. Well, you see, I've changed a lot. I left town at first and came quite ill. I had lost a lot of weight. Turned quite white. And then I came back to open the newsstand when I was sure I wouldn't be recognized and could watch Roger without his seeing me. Oh, I see. Well, Mr. Hollister, I guess that's that. We've accomplished everything we set out to. Uh, did we, Blackie? Oh, hey, that's right. We never did get to the theater, did we, Mary? Oh, we never even got to a newsreel. Say, I've got an idea. Suppose you and I and Mr. Hollister go to the theater tonight. No, no, thank you, Blackie. I, I don't care to get to the theater. Well, in that case, Mr. Hollister, by all means, come with us. We'll never get there, either. Gentlemen, Mr. Jeffers. Is it, gentlemen? Is it, gentlemen? The entire board is here, Mr. Jeffers. That's Williams, the credit department. And why is he not here, Mr. Wilson? His wife is sick, sir. The report's ready. I brought the form. Well, thank you, Mr. Wilson. We'll get to the credit reports in just a minute. Uh, gentlemen, uh, this is a sales meeting, and the purpose of this meeting is sales. And uh, what creates sales, Mr. Wilson? A satisfied client and a client who's able to pay the price we ask. A satisfied client represents a sale already made, Mr. Wilson. To sell a product, the maker of that commodity must first create a demand for his product, and then deliver to the satisfaction of his customer. So far, the market's been small. Our uh, prospects are limited. We sell an expensive item, Mr. Weatherby, but market research will reveal to us a larger demand for our product than you realize. So to make more sales, we must investigate the market more thoroughly. We're in business for profit, and we need a greater turnover. We must forget the risks, Mr. Jeffers. Yes, we must give great consideration to credit risks, Mr. Wilson. And the percentage of profit must outweigh the percentage of risk. And where does our greatest risk lie? With, uh, our client. Exactly right, Mr. Weatherby. Therefore, the character, the reliability, the motives, and the credit rating of our prospective clients must be given careful scrutiny. Because we must remember, gentlemen, that the commodity we sell is murder. <laughs> Thank you.